Good morning, you guys. Today we have a bonus book. I am going to read The Seven Chinese Brothers by Margaret Mahi. It is a 4.8 reading level story. I read this story to a couple classes last week, so some of you have probably heard it, but I loved it so much I wanted to share it with the rest of the school. And even if you have read it, heard it from me, you'll enjoy seeing it again. Such a cool folk tale from China. Once upon a time, when Qin Shu Huang was emperor of all China, seven remarkable brothers lived together on a beautiful hillside. They walked alike. They talked alike. They even looked so much alike that it was hard to tell one brother from the brother next to him. All the same, each brother had something special about him. Each brother had one amazing power that was all his own. First brother's amazing ears could hear a fly sneeze from a hundred miles away, while second brother's amazing eyes could look right across the hundred miles and see the fly sitting on the Great Wall of China, sneezing and feeling very sorry for himself. Third brother was a man of unusual strength. He could walk across China in a straight line, lifting up any mountains that got in his way, putting them back down behind him. Fourth brother was strong too, for he had bones of iron that wouldn't break, buckle, or bend. Fifth brother had legs that could grow as tall and thick as tree trunks. While Sixth Brother never ever became too hot, no matter how hard he worked under the summer sun. As for Seventh Brother, he was the baby of the family, and all his six older brothers tried to keep him smiling and happy, for he was their youngest brother, and when he was unhappy, he wept. Great, big, warm, salt tears, and each tear was large enough to drown an entire village. That must be the seventh brother. The seven brothers lived very happily together, and seven brothers never once had and seventh brother never once had anything to cry about. But one day, as they worked on their hillside, first brother lifted his and heard what with his amazing ears on either side of it, he said. I can hear such a moaning and groaning 100 miles away by the Great Wall of China. Second brother, take a look and tell me what is all the trouble about? Second brother turned his far-seeing eyes towards the Great Wall. I, ah, he cried, there is an enormous hole in the Great Wall of China. I see a hundred poor men working, working day and night, night and day. They look so tired and weak. Perhaps they are not allowed to sleep or eat until the hole in the Great Wall of China is repaired. Ah, I, can, I can't bear it, cried the seventh brother, who was always hungry himself. He looked as if he might begin to cry in sympathy with the poor, hard working men. Don't cry, said third brother quickly. I will go and help them. Off he went as quickly as he could. He got there in half a minute, less than no time. He set to work at once, tossing great stones from one hand to the other as if they were feathers. By the time darkness came, the hole was completely filled. Then third brother laid down to take a nap. But... The emperor heard that a single man had repaired the hole in one afternoon. He was not at all grateful. Indeed, he looked very worried. A man as powerful as that is more trouble than he is worth. Though the emperor himself thought the emperor himself. Strong men can be very useful to an emperor, but this one is too strong. One army may not be enough to catch him. I had better send two. When third brother woke up from his nap, he found himself surrounded by two armies. 
by the command of celestial emperor, whose face is more dazzling than the rising sun, you are to be executed in the morning, proclaimed the generals of the two armies. Take the prisoner to the palace of the emperor, they ordered. When he heard this, third brother burst into tears. A hundred miles away on the beautiful hillside, first brother heard third brother crying. Third brother must be in trouble, he exclaimed. Second brother, look far into the distance. Ayah! Third brother has take, been taken to the palace. He is surrounded by two armies. They are going to execute him in the morning. No wonder he is crying. Don't worry, cried fourth brother, who saw seventh brother was about to cry too. I will change places with him. The celestial emperor whose face is more dazzling than the rising sun, can try to cut my head off as many times as he like. Perhaps that will make him feel better. Off he went as quickly as he could and got there in half a minute, less than no time. He sneaked in between the two armies to third brother, who was wide awake and waiting for him. So third brother went home and fourth brother took his place. All the next day, the officers of the two armies tried over and over again to behead fourth brother, but sword after sword bent and broke on his bones of iron. In the end, they were forced to confess to the mighty emperor, whose whisper was like the rumble of thunder, that they simply could not behead their prisoner. A man with bones of iron, roared the mighty emperor. Drown him in the deep sea tomorrow. When fourth brother heard that he would be drowned, he became very upset. Bones of irons won't break or buckle or bend, but they will sink, he thought to himself, and he burst into tears. A hundred miles away on the beautiful hillside, first brother heard fourth brother beginning to cry. Fourth brother is crying, he said. Second brother, look in the distance, far beyond the hills. And he said, Ayah! Tomorrow morning they are going to drown fourth brother. No wonder he is crying. Don't worry, fifth brother interrupted. I will change places with him. The mighty emperor whose whisper is like the rumble of thunder can try to drown me as many times as he likes. Perhaps that might make him feel better. Off he went as quickly as he could and got there in half a minute, less than no time. He tiptoed past the guards to fourth brother who was awake and waiting for him. Swiftly, they switched places and fourth brother went home. All the next day, the soldiers of the two armies tried to drown fifth brother. They threw him into the deep sea, but his legs grew so quickly, the water only came up to his knees. They tried throwing him into deeper water, but the deep, deep water just reached as far as his waist. Finally, they threw him into the deepest part of the sea, but even the deepest part of the sea only came to his neck. Waves broke under his chin. Ah, said fifth brother, smiling happily. How lovely and cool is the deepest sweet water of all. He is more dangerous than I imagined, muttered the splendid emperor, whose merest glance was like the flash of lightning. He won't drown, but he might be burn into the fire with him tomorrow morning he commanded when he was told his fate fifth brother burst into tears far away on the beautiful hillside first brother heard fifth brother's cries second brother looked right across a hundred miles to the great wall of china aya he cried tomorrow morning they are going to burn fifth brother alive no wonder he is crying don't worry, said sixth brother, afraid that seventh brother might begin to cry too. I will take his place. The splendid emperor, whose merest glance is like the flash of lightning, can break me, can bake me all day long if he likes, he said with a shiver. 
Perhaps that will make him feel better. Off he went as quickly as he could and got there in half a minute less than no time. He tiptoed between the two armies and fourth, fifth brother, who was awake and waiting for him. So fifth brother went home and sixth brother took his place. We found fifth brother. The next day, the two armies ran backwards and forwards, bringing kindling and wood, brushwood and driftwood and bundles of dried grass. They built such a big fire that the smoke from it never, the smoke from it drifted from one end of China to the other. But Six Brother never, ever felt too hot. Basking in the heat of the blaze, he sighed with happiness. How kind of the noble emperor to let me warm myself in his very own fire, he cried. The noble emperor's whose slightest frown made the land shake like an earthquake was furious. Send for the royal archers, he ordered. In the morning, we will shoot this man full of arrows. Sixth brother burst into tears. Over the beautiful hillside, first brother heard sixth brother crying. Second brother, he asked, what do you see? Aya, cried second brother. Tomorrow morning, they are going to shoot sixth brother full of arrows. The brothers looked at each other. This, there is nothing for it, said first brother. We cannot leave sixth brother to die alone. We will all go to the noble emperor whose slightest frown makes the land shake like an earthquake. He can shoot arrows through all of us. At least we will all be together. The brothers started their journey to the palace. But poor seventh brother was so upset that he couldn't help crying just a little. His first tear was as big as the longest river in China, rolled into a single drop. His second tear was as big as the second longest river. Both tears were as salty as the sea. A great ocean of warm salt water swept down the road ahead of the brothers. It swept on for a hundred miles. Seventh brother's first tier swept one army north. His second tier swept the other army south. As for the emperor, he was tossed so high and so far that he is still trying to return to his palace. Seventh brother's flood of tears swept over the Great Wall of China, flowed all the way out into the Yellow Sea and all the way back again in half a minute less than no time. Sixth brother was free. He hurried back up the road while his six wonderful brothers hurried down the road. They were all reunited on the Great Wall. Fish, cried fifth brother. The wave had washed hundreds of glistening fish ashore. They were flipping and flapping, piled all the way to their knees. Wood, cried the third brother, gathering a forest to start the fire. Fourth brother snapped his iron fingers and his thumb. A spark leapt out to, to set fire ablazing and crackling. Fire, he cried, laughing. Oh, I am so hungry, said seventh brother. Now that we are all together again, we can have dinner and forget our troubles. I promise never to cry again, unless I absolutely must. So the seven Chinese brothers sat themselves down around the warm fire and feasted on delicious fried fish. For after such a worrying week, they were all very, very hungry. The end.